Now in online learning, there are two main approaches. There is asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous is what you're experiencing at the moment. You are engaging with some learning material, watching this video, reading this course material, at a different time to when other students would be engaging with the material. Synchronous is when we do things together. When we're in the same video conference, we're in the same face-to-face -face classroom, and all students are experiencing the same activities and the same instruction at the same time. So that's the two different ways of uh, timing a learning experience in an online manner. Now we have the concept of combining online with on-campus or in-person experiences. And we can do this in two ways. The first is through what is called hybrid learning. This is where some students are experiencing the instruction online and other students, different students, are experiencing it in person. So we may have a on-campus, in-school classroom set up and some of the students are participating live with their um, with the instructor, with the teacher, and other students are participating remotely via video conferencing or other technologies. So that's called hybrid learning. Blended learning is where you have students that do some activities online and some activities face-to-face. -face. It's the same group of students, but they all do some things online or they all do some things face-to-face. So hybrid is where you have different students participating online or face-to-face. -face. Blended is where it's the same group of students that are all doing something online or all doing something face-to-face -face at any particular time. Now, with these approaches, there are a number of different ways of facilitating these. Um, so we call these models. So first of these is the rotational model and there are four different approaches to these rotations. The first is uh, what's tr traditionally called the station rotation. Um, you may have a classroom set up and you've got a number of activities that students go, go to around the room. They may go to one location and do a science experiment. Then they might go and sit down at their desks and write that experience up. Then they might go outside and take some observations. And then they might go to the library and do some research on that. So they're going to different stations. Now that can also occur with online, where they may go um, to a presentation space, like a video conference. Then we might have breakout rooms where we go into small discussions. Then might go off on a virtual excursion and go and um, visit an online location. Um, and these, of course, can be combined in a, in a blended way with some uh, physical uh, locations and some virtual locations. So in a normal classroom environment, in a school, you might do some activities in a more traditional classroom. Then you might go off to a computer lab. And this is called the um, lab rotation model where you have some activities occurring in a more traditional classroom space and some occurring in a space that is more set up for online learning or use of computers and technologies. That we're changing the learning space, we're changing the activities that are occurring in these different learning spaces and moving through them. Then there's the um, flipped classroom model where students engage with online recordings and experiences and then they come to a physical classroom space synchronously and they unpack and discuss those experiences. In this course, we use a flipped classroom model where you engage with these video recordings and the course material in an asynchronous manner. And then we come together in a virtual space um, and synchronously discuss the material that has been explored asynchronously. 
And then there's the a la carte model where instruction is online and in small groups or individually, you may have in-person um, face-to-face instruction or it could be online individual instruction. But the majority of the instruction is done um, online in more traditional ways and then you have some other more specialized interactions. And then there's individual rotations. This is where students um, go through a whole series of smaller individualized um, learning experiences. So they might go off on their own to the library and do some research and then come back to the class. Or they might go and use um, say a mathematics computer game and um, improve their uh, maths um, capability. But it's done on an individual basis. So you can have students going off individually doing a whole range of different activities. Often used when they, as an extension activity, when they have the, completed the work that the majority of the class is still working on. Or sometimes as a remedial activity where students are having some difficulties and they might go and do some uh, particular activities with say a teacher aid or the teacher may assist them with some particular work while the rest of the class continues on with um, a more traditional learning experience. Then we have the flex model and this is where most of the instruction is done um, through a uh, online experience or a group class experience but then we have sort of enrichment activities similar to the individual rotation approach but these are done often as individual tutorials or small group um, tutorials like when uh, groups are doing computer projects and the teacher comes around and gives that small group particular attention and additional instruction. Then there's the a la carte model. This is where we have the majority of the experiences happening in a more traditional online uh, presentation or face-to-face -face classroom presentation. But then we have a range of other specialised activities. It might be an excursion. It might be going and using a virtual space or using a computer simulation. That there are some sort of more, more, more uh, specialised activities that are combined with the learning experiences. And then there's the enrichment virtual model. This is where students have in-person learning experiences um, with their teacher and some of the work is then done um, with their teachers in an online mode. So we might have in a normal classroom, school-based environment, normal classes occurring, and then there would be sort of enrichment activities that have been developed by their teacher that the students work on. S sort of like extended homework activities, but they are supported by say video clips or other online um, resources and activities to enrich the classroom experience. So they have the normal traditional classroom, but then they have some additional activities conducted online that um, enhance what was done in that classroom experience. So they're the different approaches taken to blended and online learning to combine it with more traditional face-to-face -face learning experiences or in-person learning experiences. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to all of these different approaches and I've given you a paper by Kintu, Zhu and Kagambi to explore some of these and then in Teams um, create a post of the uh, how you have experienced different um, blended and hybrid and online learning experiences and how you found those experiences.